Hello! Welcome to Path to Staff, the channel where I'm documenting my journey of becoming a staff level software engineer at a mid sized tech company in Tokyo. Uh, my name is Steven. I'm currently a level 4 software engineer in Tokyo, and I'm glad that you're watching. Okay, so in the last video, we took a look at some, uh, some ladders and honed in on typical requirements for senior level engineers. And to recap, at large companies, the typical senior engineer has very strong technical ability with strong fundamentals, uh, a good to strong understanding of architecture, and at least one domain that they are specialized in, such as uh, mobile development or machine learning and data science. They also have uh, social ability, capable of bridging gaps horizontally between teams, um, and other soft skills such as mentorship, knowledge sharing, and um, getting buy-in for their projects. They also have personal ability, referring to creative and critical thinking to solve problems, uh, a sense of leadership, ownership, and responsibility, and the initiative to start and finish projects successfully. And then lastly, they combine all of these successfully uh, in order to have positive impact throughout the, greater, throughout the greater organization. Now, when we looked at the typical requirements for the, for the level directly below senior at the same companies, the largest deltas tended to be in the social ability and the personal ability areas. So as long as you're not abrasive and in need of micromanagement, you should be able to reach the pre-senior level on technical ability alone. Uh, the focus for technical aptitude starts to broaden to a general, a general architecture, and this will include integration of systems that you design, uh, either with existing systems or with systems that are de being developed elsewhere throughout the organization. However, as I've learned both from my research presented on the channel, as well as from my mentors within my company, uh, making the jump to senior requires demonstration of the social and the personal abilities, as well as a different emphasis for the technical ability. The next question that one may have is how can we level up these aspects appropriately in order to make the jump to senior? Uh, my favorite way is by leveraging the knowledge and experience of those who have gone before and recorded their findings with things like books, tech talks, and, and blogs and podcasts and such. Um, in this episode, we're going to focus on books, but down below, I've got a um, I've got a few links to talks that I really like below. So, software architecture and systems design has plenty of excellent books and talks to choose from. So, I'll just briefly go over a few that I've either really enjoyed or uh, have on my reading list to get to ASAP. So, the first and the most recent one is A Philosophy of Software Design by John Ousterhout. Uh, this one came out in 2018, and honestly, I wish I had read it sooner. It's an excellent approach to designing software and software systems that emphasizes the impact complexity it has on a system's maintainability and propensity for defects, um, and then discusses several strategies to minimize complexity, because after all, the only way to minimize complexity is to have no code. Complexity is a necessary part of software, but John shows some common sources of complexity, as well as ways to mitigate them. And I think being able to refer to the lessons in this book as something to think about as you design software will help anyone in their career. The second book is Thinking in Systems by the late Danilo Meadows. Uh, I haven't read this one yet, but it's next on my list. From what I've read, the main premise is that many things in today's world are consequences, both positive and negative, of systems and their successes and failures, and it teaches a way to recognize these systems and how to manip manipulate them for desired effects. I gather that it's more abstract than software related specifically, but it's one of the recommendations on the excellent staffing.com, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And as I'll mention related to another book, it's never a bad idea to take a step back and kind of broaden your horizons a bit. The last technical book that I'll mention today is Patterns of Enterprise Application Architecture by Martin Fowler. This one is probably the most concrete technical one of the list, focusing on the patterns that prop up in, uh, commonly in enterprise software architectures. Now, a big part of why I added this to my reading list is because I've watched a few of Fowler's talks, I'm a decent fan of the guy, uh, and they've all been very solid learning experiences about architecture. And the other part is just that I really need to learn more about software architectures in general. I've been interested in the discipline for a while, but I tried for too long to get by on just tech talks and blog posts and stuff, which is not a terrible method, but books really give you that nice hammer in the face density that's really great for, uh, for like, uh, you know, for just learning. Just a real quick request, if you're liking the video so far, please uh, help the channel out by giving it a like. Thanks, and let's go continue. The other category of books I'm going to talk about is a little more general, and these books tend to mention, or th these books I mentioned today tend to fall under self-help or career growth rather than software engineering. Still, as one of the suggestions we'll mention, uh, a bit of outside inspiration is rarely a bad thing. First on this list is Atomic Habits by James Clear which goes into the science of habits, some of it formal science based on studies and such, and then some of it less so. One of the key concepts of the book is that we have desirable habits and we have undesirable habits, and we can sort of game our behaviors towards desirable habits and away from undesirable habits by introducing systems into our lives. And these systems will uh, take advantage of habit formation in the brain. By making desirable habits obvious, attractive, easy, and satisfying, we can make them virtually automatic because of the way that our brains work. And inversely, to break, to break bad habits, you simply do the opposite. You make them invisible, unattractive, difficult, and unsatisfying. <clears throat> That's the gist of it, but I highly recommend this book if you're looking to overall increase the value of your time. The next book is Range by David J. Epstein. 
I got this rec from a friend recently, and it turned out to be one of the better books that I've read in a while. Um, it explores the backgrounds of various people who have made it to extremely high levels of their professions, be it science, sports, art, or pretty much any field, and presents a rather surprising reality. Many people who make it to the top of their fields overwhelmingly tend to be folks who have tried out a variety of disciplines and experimented not only with their own abilities, but also with the cumulative experience of the path that they've taken up until now. The author posits that experimentation in search of an individual's fit is a uh, fit with the discipline is a better determinant of success than their time spent in the discipline, which is also sometimes called, called grit in the related literature. Even if you're not particularly interested in branching out and applying the research from this to your own life, I thought it was a greatly interesting read. So I would highly recommend it on that virtue alone. The next book is The Science of Effective Communication by Ian Tahofsky. He's written several books in the realm of mindfulness and personal psychology and stuff like that, but I thought I, I was looking for this book as more of, an, uh, more of a general soft skills book, which it, I think it serves that purpose very well. As could be expected from someone who writes on psychology, a lot of that shows up in this book to present strategies on how to communicate, um, including things like conflict resolution, dealing with certain personality types, professional communication, persuasion, and loads of other soft skills that anyone can learn from. If you're looking for ways that you can improve how you communicate with people, and thus improve your relationships with people, this book is a great trove of knowledge. And even if it's all obvious to you, I think that it's uh, you know good to know that the science agrees with you. This next book I also haven't read yet, but I see it often referenced as a book uh, for moving up from independent contributor to management as a software engineer. This book is The Manager's Path by Camille Fournier, described on the back as a book that takes you through each stage in the journey from engineer to technical manager. Now, this channel isn't called Path to Manager, so you might wonder why it's on my list. Well, one of the big things in common between higher level ICs and pretty much all managers is some form of leadership, uh, be that mentoring, promoting collaborations, and promoting your own ideas as some examples. And if you read this book, who knows, maybe engineering management will sound more appealing to you than IC work. The last book I briefly mentioned before, um, is also available as a free website, so I haven't read the book yet as the website has a lot of information already, although I have ordered it. That is Staff Engineer Leadership Beyond the Management Track by Will Larson, which has a no small part guided me towards the goal of becoming a staff engineer. Uh, Larson points out that the IC path is, under, is extremely underdocumented, especially in comparison to the management path, the, also the book, The Manager's Path, and started the project to spread knowledge about how, how folks get to staff level, collecting interviews with staff plus engineers, aggregating books, and collating all of this information into guides on things like staff engineer archetypes and work on what matters. If you're already at senior level and trying to break through, or you just want more general career advice for the IC track, uh, which generally uh, you know, is senior staff, principal, etc., uh, this project is a must read. Okay, so that was my senior engineer book list. This is by no means an extensive list, and I'm definitely missing some things, but I think it's a good list. It's a good broad general list of interesting and thought-provoking books that most folks should find helpful, um, especially software engineers looking to up their career. Now, if you have more suggestions or want my thoughts on any other technical books, please leave a comment down below. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.